Good evening, everyone. If you'll stand with us, please. We're going to turn in our hymnals to page number 265. 265. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the water lifted me, now say, am I? God bless you, church. Amen. Remain standing. Brother Tommy, will you take us, Lord, in prayer, dear brother? Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. God, let's be those heavenly fathers that like that time that strike that one image of the Lord Jesus and the crucified. Father, we pray for this church always. I yes, pray Lord. Father, for Brother Jeff as his family. Touch him. I pray for Brother Jimmy as he sings and bless the brother yes. tonight. Bless our church and keep it, God. I pray for Jim Palmer. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Good looking crowd tonight. Thank you for all those who came out. Uh, we had a good time this morning, didn't we? Uh, Brother Tommy sure did do a good job. And uh, Brother Tommy, we appreciate that message on those dry bones. And uh, man, we got a mighty work to do, don't we? We sure do. Uh, we're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, thank everybody coming out to the prayer room. Uh, thank all those uh, visiting with us on social media tonight. Amen. We got our uh, missionaries back, the Florence family from Papua New Guinea, going back mid-January, right? 
Amen. So let's just be in prayer for them. Glad to have them back. And uh, we had a lot of good visitors this morning. Any visitors with us tonight? I don't, I don't, I don't think we got any visitors tonight, but we had a, a good looking crowd of visitors this morning. And, and as a church, let's put on our smiling faces and go up and meet and greet those visitors and encourage them to come back. It sure was good to have them this morning. There's a lot of needs uh, mentioned in the prayer room tonight. We come to the right place to get some help, didn't we? And uh, I've, I've never been through those church doors where I didn't walk away feeling more depressed and, and down on my luck. I always leave this uh, church house uplifted and uh, excited. And uh, Lord, I, we, we just need to pray for the service tonight that God moves in a mighty way. He helps us. He's given us a message and uh, we just pray that it comes out of these, uh, these lips like God wanted it to. So y'all pray for me tonight. Um, any other prayer requests before we do some singing? Um, I'm, I'm failing here. Uh, I got the green car back out. Let me just read these dates right quick so everybody knows the upcoming events. And remember, the, um, they got to display the, the, the Florence family in the foyer, so you guys take a look at that when you're leaving tonight and uh, look and see what all they've got upcoming. Um, December 3rd, is that the date? December 3rd, is that the date? Yep, the December 3rd, Ladies Joy Circle. Hey, Amen, where's Miss Carol? Next Saturday. It, all right, Miss Becky, thank you for that. December 18th, of course, is our Christmas cantata. We're going to be singing. Everybody come out with a meal afterwards. No Sunday school. December 14th is our cross trainers Christmas. We're excited about that. By a show of hands, uh, how many people in this room work in cross trainers? Do something with the youth. I mean, most of everybody in here, and we sure do thank you. It takes all of us. Uh, uh, Brother Jeff can't do it by himself, and, uh, and it takes a big, big group to, to keep this thing going, and, and a lot of folks working in the fellowship hall. Brother, we cook uh, uh, meals for about 40, 40 kids or so. We used to run about 80, but, but God's, uh, he's got the right number of what, where he wants us to be right now to spend some time with these, these youngins and teach them about the Lord. That's, uh, that's what we try to do, just spread the gospel news and, and teach these, uh, these boys and girls about Jesus. And we're hoping it gets contagious and they get saved and uh, they take that message home to their families. And mom and daddy get saved. That's what this thing's all about. Uh, I tell you, when I, when, it's contagious being on fire for God. Uh, you want to do more. You want to study more. You want to get in the, God's Word and read about Him. And if you truly fall in love with the Lord, it's just a life-changing experience. And I just thank God for salvation tonight. How many of you are just thankful for salvation, what, the, uh, what God's done for us in our lives? Amen. He sure is good, isn't he? I'm excited. We're in a good place tonight. We're, we're at Cochran Ridge Baptist Church. The Lord's with us tonight. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Right, Brother Rick? All right. Well, we're going to get on with some singing, Brother Larry. And then we're going to be in 1 Samuel. <laughs> yes. Um, several people have asked, and I don't think I've done a good job communicating it out. But for those who don't know, one of our cross trainers, the, I guess it was last week, um, we were going to pick them up, and one of the families was being, being evicted from their house right, right before the Thanksgiving holidays. So the church last week, um, we collected some money and we presented them with a check um, last Sunday, and they were very thankful and very appreciative to the church. And um, she said that they were on the cusp of getting their house back, their, their, same, their same house, and, um, and I, I believe they're, they're back at home now. So pray, praise the Lord that, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's one thing with, for, for mom and daddy, but when you got, when you got uh, little ones um, having uh, nowhere to go, they were able to stay with some family members, but one, uh, one of the little girls has cancer. Uh, one of the little girls, she doesn't come to cross train her. She's, she's, she's little, but she's battling cancer. So there's just a lot of needs um, in, the, in, our, in our cross trainers, in our youth, and uh, in those families, there's a lot of needs in this room tonight. There's a lot of family needs. And um, let's just pray one for another. Let's, uh, let's uh, fulfill the Great Commission and do what God would have us to do. Be kind to others, love others, edify, lift others up, pray for others. That's what we need to be doing as a church, isn't it? But let's pray for this service. Again, let's, uh, uh, Brother Jeff, I, I doubt he's listening. I hope he's, I hope he's turning it off. But we sure do miss Brother Jeff. And, um, and let's pray for him and Miss Pam. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then, Brother Larry, we're going to turn it over to you if that's all right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. 
And we sure do thank you for this great opportunity tonight, God. We pray that you just go with us in the service. Uh, God, I pray that you go with, uh, with all those, touch all those who are going to be singing tonight. And Lord, I pray that you, uh, you uh, touch me, God, when we uh, break, bring the bread of life, God, and, and you just um, help orchestrate the words out of my mouth. And, and um, Lord, uh, we just pray that we're a help tonight. God, just go with us and all the prayer, uh, prayer needs that were made mention tonight. God, we pray that you touch each and every one of them. Lord, we love you, and we just sure do thank you for this opportunity tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Brother Larry. morning, wasn't it? Good to be in the house of the Lord. And, um, brother, back in the prayer room, Brother Ernest was asking prayer for his children. And, uh, you know, we all need prayer for our children, whether they're saved, walking with the Lord, or not walking with the Lord. Whatever the need is, we're all concerned about our children, aren't we? And I remember, I believe it was Brother Bell that was our evangelist at our revival was it last spring that uh, was talking about how to pray for those we love? And he talked about pray that, praying that, that uh, uh, God would open their eyes. You know, the world's blinded. And uh, if they could see what we see, they'd want to get saved too. So we need to pray that God would open their eyes. And then he said pray that the, God would get the word to them that somebody would take the word to them and then pray that God would give them his peace. Thank God for the peace of God and I feel so sorry for those that do not have the peace of God, especially as they get older. You know, somebody said an atheist is like an old man. He's dressed up with nowhere to go. Well, you know, we're not looking at a brick wall that we're facing. We're looking at an open window. And I had a thought this past week that's just in, it just blessed me. I never really thought about it before, never preached on the thousand year reign of Christ. But you know, heaven, we don't know what heaven's going to be like. But the Bible said that Jesus is going to come back here and he's going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. And we're going to rule and reign with him. I can identify with that a little more than I can heaven. I know what it's like here. We might even get to be able to come to the Cochran Ridge Baptist Church. What do you think? What a blessing. The thousand... Be a new, build. <laughs> be a new building. This will be burnt up. But yeah, what? I mean, it's, going to, it's good now, but it's going to get even gooder. Amen. Thank God for the peace of God. Wonderful peace. <coughs> Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight Rose a melody sweeter than song In celestial-like strains it unceasingly falls O'er my soul like an infinite Come sing with me, peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father. soul 
so secure that no power can mine it away while the years of eternity rolls I am resting tonight in this wonderful peace resting sweetly in Jesus control for I'm kept from all danger by night and by day and his glory is flooding my soul peace peace wonderful peace coming down from the father in fathomless billows of love and methinks when I rise to that city of peace where the author of peace I shall see that one strain of the song which the ransom will sing in that heavenly kingdom shall be peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father. Ah, oh, soul, are you here without comfort and rest, marching down the rough pathway of time? Make Jesus your friend ere the shadows grow dim. Oh, accept this sweet peace so sublime peace peace wonderful peace coming down from the father above sleep over my spirit forever I pray in fathomless billows of love. Uh, we're just going to do a few little, we call them ABC songs. They're scripture verses put to the ABCs. And some of you might, well, you'll probably know all the verses that we sing, but you may have heard this from someone before. Um, but we're going to sing a few of those first, and then we'll sing A Passion for Thee. Starting with B. 
to get a CD of that. Amen. Thank y'all for singing tonight. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit who all appreciates the Holy Spirit tonight. Amen. I like it when he comes in and dwells among us and I pray that each one of us are, have pray, uh, gotten prayed up and invited uh, the Lord and Savior to be with us in this service and, and I'm just thankful for the Holy Spirit of God. What he, uh, what he can do, uh, uh, we can't do nothing without him, Brother Tommy. And uh, I appreciate that message this morning about those dry bones. And uh, believe it or not, our message tonight sort of ties with Brother Tommy. Isn't that amazing how the Lord orchestrates and, and uh, sets things up? We're going to be in 1 Samuel. We're going to be in 1 Samuel tonight. The first five books of Moses, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. <coughs> I like those first five books. I like all the books in the Bible. Does everybody like all the books in the Bible? Miss Emily, you like all the books in the Bible. You can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, you, you get into these. I'm not a, a Bible scholar by any means. Nowhere's near close. Uh, sometimes when I hear these men of God, uh, the brother Larry, start uh, preaching in Sunday school, I just uh, realize how little I know. And I'm thankful for the mighty men of God in this church. Uh, uh, who we could learn from and uh, who just do a good job teaching the brother Bobs of the world. And, and uh, we sure do love our Sunday school teachers. Uh, sure am thankful for them. Church, we got a lot of talent at this church, don't we? Uh, uh, men who can, who can teach and preach. Uh, we, I want to thank Dan and Cindy for being up there in the sound room trying to 
trying to man that beast up there. I, I tell you what, when we changed out the system a couple of years ago, Brother Jamie uh, tried to show me, and uh, I mean, I was having a pretty hard time. And, uh, but Dan and Cindy sort of got this thing figured out and can keep the church going when, when our pastor and Jamie aren't here. Uh, I'm thankful Miss Deborah can get on that piano and, uh, and not miss a beat. And it sounds, uh, and, uh, to keep us uh, so we could sing and, and uh, have our choir. Uh, wasn't that, isn't that something? Uh, the talent in this church. God's given all of us a uh, unique ability and it's up to us to use that ability for the Lord. Amen. Uh, but when, uh, when we clench the, the Holy Spirit, uh, it's sort of hard to use those talents, but that's why we need to be praying for the Holy Spirit of God to touch us and to move us and to stir our hearts, and uh, so we could do a mighty work for, for the Lord this uh, um, in, uh, in our everyday walk, in our everyday life. Uh, it's easy to do a, a nice, uh, good work uh, in, this, in this nice building when, uh, when the doors are closed, we're with our pastor, but when we leave those doors... That's when the attack starts to begin. That's when we need the Holy Ghost of God more than ever so we can uh, fight the daily battles of what this world has got to offer. And there's, a, there's a spiritual battle when we leave these, when we leave these doors. Uh, we, we heard about in the prayer room some, some uh, people who are facing uh, spiritual battles. Some of our cross trainers, youngins, are facing spiritual battles. The devil wants to get them as soon as he can. In elementary school, he wants to warp their mind and confuse them to where they don't know if they're boys or girls. And I'm not trying to be ugly tonight, but uh, uh, the, God is not the author of confusion, but the devil is. He wants to confuse us and warp our minds and get us, uh, get us thinking different things and, 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 and not, getting, not uh, to be thinking on the things of God and godly things. That's what the devil wants to do. He'll do anything to make us trip up and fall so everybody, this whole world can laugh at us. We got a mighty work to do. We were talking about in Sunday school this morning. Uh, when we brush our teeth, we need to be putting on that armor of God. That's just not for kids. That's for adults too, isn't it? Man, we got to put on that uh, armor of God every day, Brother Ken, if we want to stand a chance to survive out there. We got a mighty work to do. We need the, uh, the Holy Spirit to help us, and I'm thankful that I've seen the Holy Spirit show up and show out in this building time and time again. I'm thankful for the services that we've had. Tonight's a new service, and let's just pray that the Holy Spirit of God comes down and uh, tells us exactly what we need. We're going to be in 1 Samuel, if I can find my spot. We're going to start in verse 13, or chapter 13, verse 8, and we're going to read a couple uh, different passages. Y'all just bear with me. I'm not the best, uh, the best reader, uh, not too good of an orator. So y'all just hang on tight the best you can. And uh, let's just pray for the Holy Spirit of God tonight. I'm thankful for my church family. Uh, how many of you are thankful for your pastor? Yeah, we need to tell them we're thankful for him, don't we? Uh, we need to, uh, when we're sitting out there in those, in those uh, benches, uh, we don't need to put our persimmon face on. We need to put our smiling faces on. And, uh, and give Jeff some amens and hallelujahs and, and encourage him because he sure does encourage me. And does Brother Jeff encourage all of you? I know he does. I know he does. So let's pray for our dear pastor, Brother Jeff, and Miss Pam tonight. Uh, pray that they get rested up. Pray that they eat a lot on their cruise and, uh, and, uh, and get filled up. Uh, but we do sure do miss them. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 13. And uh, we're going to start in verse 8. We're going to be... Talking on the subject of tonight of global failure, man, global failure. We're going to be looking at the life of Saul, and uh, I really like these historical books in the Bible. When you get into First Samuel, Second Samuel, the Kings, I really—that's my kind of reading. It's something that I could follow pretty good, and, uh, and then you get into other parts and just way over my head. I'm not going to lie. But I'm thankful for uh, the, the book, uh, the Bible God's given us, and we just need to open it up and study it, and God will unfold some things for us, won't he? He'll, he'll open things up for us. But, uh, but tonight we're going to be looking at the life of Saul, the first king of Israel. Uh, so let's start in uh, ch uh, verse 8, and then we'll follow the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, it says, And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, 
Behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw the people were scattered from me, and that thou canst uh, not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. So I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. A few more verses. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the, would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you again in the sweet, precious name of Jesus. God, we ask that you just uh, give us the right words to say over the next few minutes. God, we pray that we're uh, an encouragement tonight to somebody in this, in this room. And God, just help us, uh, uh, help us deliver this message that you put in my heart tonight. Lord, we sure do love you, and we sure do thank you for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, First Samuel, uh, just uh, to... To set this up a little bit more, when you're when you're looking at Samuel, you see you see Samuel come on the scene in the beginning, and then um, as you're as you're going through Samuel, you'll see that um, that um, let me find my spot here. Uh, who was Samuel, by the way? Samuel was a priest. He was a judge, and uh, and uh, everybody looked up to Samuel. He was one of the last judges in Israel. And when we're looking at Samuel, let me find my spot, in chapter 8, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 8, we see that um, during this whole time, the Israelites are at battle with the Philistines. I like in, uh, in, uh, in 1 Samuel, when you uh, read about one of the biggest battles of the Philistines, and one of my favorite stories, and it's probably a lot of your favorite stories, the battle with David and Goliath. Uh, when uh, little David beat that Philistine champion. But the, the, the Israel is at war. Uh, every day is in turmoil. It's a turbulent time in the history of Israel. And, uh, and, uh, and Samuel was a judge, but you know the, the people of Israel wanted a little bit more. They wanted a king. They demanded for a king. And uh, in chapter 8, and it says, And it came to pass when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Well, guess what happens? Uh, a lot of times, power starts getting to our head a little bit, don't it? And uh, we get out of the will of God, and we start doing uh, things our way. And that's one thing that we're going to focus on tonight in, in the life of Saul, uh, was that he wanted to do things his way. And ultimately, it wasn't God's way, and God took the kingdom from, them, from him. And uh, there's a great message in that. If we get out of the will of God, uh, just like these great United States of America, God uh, will have judgment and he'll, he'll take things from us. We'll get into that a little bit more later. It says, verse 2 in chapter 8, Now the name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second Abiah, and they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel and to Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But this thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And then going on down, it says, verse 7, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, mm, that I should not reign over them. Uh, going on down, uh, the, the Lord grants their request to have, a, to have a king, but Samuel warns them. He says, we, we can have a king on the scenes, but there's going to be some problems. Um, let me give you some warnings, Israel. He says, and Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked him of a king. In verse 11, it says, and he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you, he will take your sons and appoint them for himself. 
Uh, and verse 12, he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and, and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest. Verse 13, and he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. Verse 14, and he will take your fields, he will take your vineyards, uh, your olive gardens and the best of them. And uh, verse 15, he will take the tenth of your seed. Verse 16, he will take your uh, men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. Uh, he will take the tenth of your sheep. He, he, uh, and, he, and you shall cry out in that day because of your king, which you shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. We see uh, that the people of Israel... The, you know, they, they heard the warning, but they still wanted a king. And uh, sometimes uh, we're a needy people, aren't we? The people of Israel, the children of Israel, uh, were certainly a needy people. Um, so after this, we see Saul come on the scene. He's a tall, handsome man. Uh, he fit the role of a king. Uh, he, uh, Samuel was going to anoint him as king, and then there was a battle, and, and the people fell in love with him. Uh, and uh, he had all these great uh, kingship type of traits. And, um, and uh, so we see him being chosen as the first king in chapter number 9. And then the verses that we, that we read in chapter 13, we see, um, we see the kingship of Saul starting out. And then they go through several different battles and his kingship's growing. But some things go wrong immediately. Uh, uh, he starts looking uh, on his ways. He starts, uh, uh, Samuel had given him very specific instructions through these chapters about how he's supposed to lead and guide and, and uh, orchestrate the battles and, uh, and uh, Samuel's supposed to do different things and offer offerings to the Lord. But uh, just like Saul, a lot of times this happens with, with us, O self gets in the way, don't it? O self got in the way for, for Saul. <clears throat> in chapter 13, in verse 8, when we started out reading tonight, we see um, in uh, verse eight, verses 8 through 12, Saul's self-will. So what is self-will? Saul has some self-will. That's just simply doing what you want to do. Uh, not uh, not uh, thinking about what God wants you to do, but what you want to do. And that's sort of what happened with Saul. Uh, he started doing what he wanted to do. And uh, that was sort of the demise of his, king, of his kingship. And uh, in verse 13, I want to read this again in chapter 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, uh, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel. Uh, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. So uh, he's presented... Um, this from, from Samuel, and, it, and, it, and, the, and the story continues. He, he gets this news that he's going to lose his kingship. And uh, there's continuing to be battles with those Philistines. And, um, and uh, we see where he's in a battle, and, and his son Jonathan tried to uh, come in and, and uh, help in one of the, uh, the, to confront one of the Philistine garrisons. And, and then we see um, they win this battle. Um, uh, Jonathan beats about 20 of the, of the Philistines. And then we see in, um, later on in chapter 14, Saul makes this oath. He makes this oath. And, um, and he said, And the men of Israel, in verse 24 of chapter 14, And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may be avenged on mine enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. They were in battle that day, and he said, none of you can eat. And they were getting very weakened, and all they had of the land came to a wood, that they were a honey upon the ground. And when the people were coming to the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. And in verse 27 it says, but Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put it his hand to his mouth and his eyes were enlightened. Um, so um, Jonathan, Saul's son, uh, didn't follow his dad's, his dad's orders and he tasted that honey. Um, but Saul uh, gave, uh, was given 
bad, bad, uh, bad advice to uh, the, uh, the uh, men of Israel. <clears throat> we look at the self-will and how self-will can destroy, can be a downfall of any person. When you think about just parenting, when you think about um, uh, uh, something at work, when you think about um, uh, uh, maybe it's a role you're trying to do at church, when you put yourself and you take God out of it, things get really hard to do, don't they? Uh, the self-will is something that can destroy somebody. It can destroy, it can destroy daddies. It can destroy uh, uh, the relationships at home because everything's about you and yourself. Uh, we need to make everything about God. And, uh, and uh, we need to ask God for instructions, and we need to follow those instructions. Samuel uh, was uh, given Saul that warning, but Saul... Was, uh, he wanted the power, he wanted the glory, and he took God out of it. But things start going south real quick when you take God out of it, don't it? And uh, that's what we see in today's time. Years ago, we took God out of what? School. Look at our schools today. Years ago, we took God out of our country. Look at our country today. When you take God out of things, uh, things uh, go south real quick. We see this self-will, then we saw this oath that uh, Saul had, uh, he gave this foolish direction uh, that almost cost his son's life uh, because he said, curse be the person who, who eats, and, and he, he uh, ate of that honeycomb. But he gave uh, some bad advice. We need to be careful with the advice that we give out to people. We need to be giving godly advice to people. He led people down a road to where they sin. In chapter 14, in verse 31, and y'all just bear with me. I'm reading all kinds of scriptures um, through the First Samuel. Uh, chapter 14, verse 31, it says, And they smote the Philistines and, uh, that day from Michmash to Asia Lion, and the people were very faint. And the people flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slew them on the ground. And the people did eat them with the blood. Uh, then they uh, told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against the Lord, and what they eat with the blood. And he said, you have transgressed, roll a great stone unto me this day. They ate of the, of the blood and they weren't, supposed to, they weren't supposed to be eaten. But they were so hungry and they were, uh, they'd been in battle uh, all day and they were ready to eat. And they, and they, uh, they ate of the animals and the, and the blood and they sinned against God. He was leading them down the wrong road. We need to be careful when we're leading people, when we're, uh, when we're trying to give our children direction, when we're trying to uh, teach young'uns here at church. We need to be careful of the wisdom uh, of, of, of the directions that we give them and lead them down the right road. You could get going in the wrong road really, really easy and, and things start uh, transpiring downhill really quick. Amen? <clears throat> and then we see in chapter 15, um, this sort of was the uh, thing that sort of ended it, uh, sealed the deal. Um, um, we see that the Israel goes to battle with the Malachites. And, um, and then verse number 8 of chapter 15, And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and of the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is uh, turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, Carmel and uh, behold, he set him up a place, and it is gone, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. He, was, um, and, um, he, was, he went to battle with these Amalekites, and he was supposed to utterly destroy every single thing there. But he spared the king and the oxen and the sheep, and he was supposed to destroy everything. Uh, sometimes uh, we don't, uh, we're not obedient like we need to be, right? He sure wasn't obedient. And that's something that, uh, a, 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 a lesson that we get out of this, the importance of obedience. When God tells you to do something, you need to do it. Uh, if he, uh, in, in this passage, he tells them to destroy everything. In verse 18, uh, let me see here, in verse 17, 
It says, And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the, uh, uh, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Uh, those were the directions. Go and destroy them. And then verse 19, Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have fought. And, uh, and brought uh, Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amaleks. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken from the fat of rams. He was supposed to utterly destroy the king and everything of the Malachites, and he didn't. And um, he wasn't obedient to God. So we see Saul's self-will. He was wanting to, uh, he started making things about himself. He was given uh, poor uh, directions, poor instructions to the children of Israel, and he wasn't obeying God. And uh, to me, that all those things add up to what I'm calling global failure. Global failure. We could have global failure in our lives. We can have global failure by not following God. You're going to have global failure if you don't follow uh, the direction of God. If you don't uh, follow the instructions in this book, you're going to, uh, uh, families will fall apart. Um, can, um, when, you, when, you, when you sit and look at uh, statistics and, and when you really look in the, in the schools and you look at home situations, uh, when, you, when you look at uh, the, the uh, moms and dads of uh, my, my kids, uh, the ones that are together and the ones that aren't. The ones that are, are together are usually in church. They've, they've established uh, their marriage around God and godly things. And when you get away from that, the devil is going to creep in and, and uh, get, uh, and get uh, the family going in a different direction. How many people have you seen, and it happens that families within churches get divorced, but uh, the statistics, statistics are a lot greater if, if a family is not rooted uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, and they have God in their home. When uh, mom and dad don't never have anything to do with the Lord, uh, things can uh, really go down here really quick. Global failure. This thing starts with us as parents. We need to be uh, grounded. We need to be rooted in God's word. We need to be in church when the church doors are open. Uh, we need to be teaching our kids uh, from the Bible. We need to be teaching our kids these songs that they were singing with all these Bible verses. Isn't that something? Uh, what a wonderful job they did up here singing all those wonderful songs. But it starts with us, Mom and Dad. When we look at uh, what's wrong with America today, it starts with us. We're having the, uh, the problem of global failure. We're not obeying God. Uh, we're giving uh, uh, bad directions to our youngins. Uh, we're not giving godly instruction, godly wisdom. Uh, we're not getting in the book and finding out what God would have us to do. He's got a plan for each and every one of us. But you're going to have global failure when, when you put old self in the way and try to make decisions uh, yourself without seeking guidance and a direction from the, from the Lord. Everything that we do, we need to be in prayer for. Even paying bills. We need to be praying how are we going to pay the bills because we need to put, uh, we need to put uh, the, the, the first tenth of everything we have to God. How many of us do it? God's got a great big plan for us, but our priorities have gotten a little bit backwards. And uh, we can sort of relate. Aren't you glad that God's given us all these wonderful Bible, uh, these Bible, uh, I don't want to say stories because they're real events, but all these uh, events that have taken place thousands of years ago, how we can relate to them uh, tonight to, uh, in, the, in, the, in, uh, in our present day. Old self can get in the way. It got in the way of Saul uh, thousands, uh, uh, 4,000 years ago or so when, whenever um, the, they were living here on this earth. But what happens right after that? We see the kingship being taken from him. And right after that, Saul starts leading the life. He starts being depressed. And uh, he starts, um, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the presence of the Lord has left him. And, and um, he, just, he just starts spiraling 
uh, even more and more down, downhill. And then in, in later on in chapter 16, we see a new king who's going to be set on the throne. This king uh, is the, the, the Davidic uh, kingship line that ultimately has Jesus in it. Isn't that something when we're talking about King David, little King David? We start reading about the new king that God's going to place on the throne. And uh, in, uh, in chapter 16, verse 7, it says, But the... <clears throat> But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Isn't that something? God looks at our heart. He don't care what we look like. Saul fit the description of being a great king. He was tall and handsome and, and uh, had all these uh, good military accolades behind him. He looked like a king. But at the end of the day, his heart wasn't for God. God wants our heart. He's, 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 he, he could care less about the car that we drive, the clothes that we wear. He just wants to know what's in our heart. Do we love the Lord tonight? How many of us love the Lord tonight? Show of hands all through the, all through the building tonight. Hallelujah. God's good. God's good. Uh, I'm just thankful for him. Um, in, in chapter 7, uh, 16, 7, he's looking at the, at the heart. And then we see that Samuel uh, anoints little David. And I just find it amazing how um, as David uh, becomes anointed and becomes the new king of Israel, he's still little. Uh, right before the, uh, he faces the Philistine champion, um, we see David on the scene fighting lions and bears, getting ready for battle. God's training him up. And, uh, and I like uh, reading about David and and, uh, and then there's, a, there's more lessons than that. David had a heart for God, but he sure did sin, didn't he? We all fall short of the glory of God. We all make mistakes. None of us are perfect. But God just wants our heart. He wants us to love him. And, uh, and then we see, uh, we see this battle with David and Goliath um, in uh, chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. And then, uh, and, um, and then we see after this battle, there's a little bit of jealousy that comes on the scene. We see Saul um, is being uh, found jealous of, of uh, David. Let's see if I can find it in verse uh, chapter 18. Um, and uh, Saul, in 18.8, uh, And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can uh, he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. He started becoming jealous of, uh, of little David. And jealousy, my friend, can take a house down. Jealousy can take a church down. Uh, that old uh, devil himself wants us to be jealous of one another. He wants us to be jealous of what somebody may have that we don't. And uh, he wants to throw that in front of you, in front of, you uh, in front of your face. And Saul couldn't handle it. He knew the kingship was being taken away from him. Samuel was bold and told him that you're, you're, no, you're not going to be king anymore. And he sees this little David come on the scene and uh, this mighty great big champion and uh, the Israelites loved him and rallied around him and he became just sore and jealous of David and spent the last days of his life chasing David. And then we see the Psalms and all these different uh, the Psalms about the stories of David and, and uh, him uh, asking for help from God and, and the wonderful Psalms that, that, he, that he had written. But my friends, um, self, your self-will can take a house down and ultimately lead to global failure. Giving uh, wrong instruction can lead to a global failure. Giving wrong instructions to your kids can lead to a global failure. Uh, we need to give sound instruction, sound advice just from the Word of God. To our, to our loved ones, to our friends, uh, even to uh, those we come in contact with in, in the world. Uh, we see obedience, how important obedience is, my friends. If God tells you to do something, we need to be doing it. The importance of obedience. We saw where um, uh, Saul was told to destroy the Amalekites, to utterly destroy them, but he didn't. He left the king, the, the cows, and the sheep. He left them. Uh, for him. But guess what? Samuel got a hold of that and warned him that he was supposed to kill all the Amalekites. And then it, later on the Bible tells us that Samuel went and killed that king. He took care of God's business. 
We need people following through and doing God's business. And that starts with us here as a church. We need to be doing God's business. We need to be in the business of God. And, uh, and uh, spreading that good old gospel message, what God's done for us. And, uh, and if we really start thinking about it, uh, where is our excitement at tonight, church, for what God's done for us? Uh, the, the excitement of salvation. We, we, we need to be so joyed and so overwhelmed with what God has given us, uh, the, the second chances, uh, the, the forgiveness of our sins. Man, that should get us excited, right, church? Man, that should get us excited. We should turn them persimmon faces upside down. The, the old uh, song from Lionel Playworld says, turn the frown upside down. That's the way we need to be. Not just at Christmas time, but all the time. We're going to have our ups and downs. We're going to have our battles. Uh, all of us are facing a storm right now. But God has a, uh, a great plan for us, and he just wants us to be in his will. He wants us to get old self out of the way and, and uh, trust him more in everything that we do. Trust, uh, trust God and obey God. Trust the Lord and do good is what the Bible says uh, in, the, in Psalms. I want to read a couple of other verses, uh, some good reminders. As uh, Saul uh, and the children of Israel um, were going through uh, Saul's uh, reign in chapter 12, uh, verse 14. These are some pretty good instructions that we could take with us tonight. Listen, <clears throat> if you will fear, fear the Lord... And serve him. Amen. Fear the Lord. Have total respect. Have total allness for God. Uh, uh, when, when we get down to these, when the, uh, these pews, when we pray to God, just be in total awe of God because of who he is. Isn't he something tonight? He could be in all of our hearts, all uh, across uh, people around this world at the same time. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? God loves us that much. He's, he's, we need to fear the Lord. That's one thing that we teach these youngins on Wednesday nights. They come in off the bus sometimes a little, uh, a little loud, and we have to remind them, re reverence to the God's house, respect it. We need to respect God and fear to the Lord, it says, and serve him. Man, that's, this was, this was uh, written in 1 Samuel. That's, we need to be doing that today, don't we, Miss Teresa? We need to serve him. What, uh, what can you do for God? What has God called you to do that you haven't been doing? And obey his voice, and not rebel against the commandments of the Lord. Then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. Man, that, that, that same message can apply today, right? Uh, especially in these great United States of America. If we'll fear the Lord as a, as a body of uh, great Americans here, if we'll serve him and obey his voice, God will turn this thing around, won't he? I think God's got a... I think he's got everything orchestrated and planned out the way he wants it to go right now. He knows what's going to happen. He knows who's going to fall on their knees and call on the name of God. And he knows all those who are going to reject God. When you say no to God, you know what that means? That means you reject God. Have you ever thought about it that way? Man, rejection is a bad word, isn't it? I mean, that's a, uh, I mean we were given an illustration the other day um, in, in, uh, in, uh, in our cross trainers Bible time. Um, imagine your best friend uh, you uh, at Christmas time you got your best friend the gift that they've always wanted and uh, you were so proud of that gift you've been working on it for for uh, for uh, two months and you got that thing wrapped up with a bow on it and you took it to your friend you knock on the door and uh, excited about giving that wonderful present to your friend and uh, they open the door and barely even acknowledge you you say I got this gift for you it's what you wanted do you love it I don't like this gift. Uh, why'd you get it from me? I mean, that's a rejection, isn't it? And how do you think God feels when we tell him no? Man, if you think about it, rejecting God, saying no to God is a rejection to God. And uh, God may only give you so many chances. I was hearing a preacher, and I've shared this before. Uh, there was a revival service, and, and uh, the preacher every night would give an invitation. And, the, uh, and there was one individual out in the crowd who, uh, uh, who wouldn't move. And uh, at, by the end of the week, by the end of the revival service, every night he left, and finally the, the preacher asked him, he says, I see you raising your hand every time when we're in, in, doing this invitation. And uh, why, have you, why can't you call, why won't you accept Jesus as your personal Savior and invite him into your heart? He said, years ago, uh, the Holy Spirit of God was beating on my heart's door. And I said, no, I'll do it later. And he said, I just haven't felt the presence of God uh, 
to where I can be saved. Isn't that something? God only gives you so many chances. We don't know how many chances we have in this thing. He's a patient God. He's a loving God. But he'll only give you so many chances. That's why we've got to get so excited for God and, and uh, watch how we ca uh, carry ourselves, how we conduct ourselves in this lost and dying world. Uh, Brother Tommy, you're right. I was a server on Sundays when I was a teenager, and I couldn't stand waiting on church people. They were the worst. You were right when you said that. Uh, uh, and that shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. We, we need to be a peculiar people. We need to be set apart. And uh, we need to show a lost and dying world what true love is. Uh, and, and all that just represents who Jesus is, love. And, uh, man, I'm just thankful for the Lord tonight. In verse 15 it says, But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Those are some pretty good instructions. Fear the Lord, obey His voice, and rebel not against His commandments. If God tells you to do something, we need to do it. <clears throat> Global failure, self-will, disobedience, <clears throat> global failure in our schools, global failure in our country. There's a root cause of all this. Jesus has taken out of all of it. Global failure is what's going to happen. Global failure will just, uh, uh, getting out of the will of God and not following God will destroy families. It'll destroy mamas and daddies and relationships. It'll tear things apart when God's not in it. But when God is in it, he can, he can sort of piece things back together, glue things back together, mend things. Aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit of God and what he can do in an individual's life, what he's done in your life? We never need to forget what God's done in our lives. Number one, did he save you? Never forget what he, that he saved you. That's a miracle by itself. That your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We sung that song this morning. I can't get over the Lamb's Book of Life, Brother Mike. My name's in it. I hope all of your names are in it. We need to get excited about that, uh, about that book. We need to tell everybody we can about Jesus. We need to, we need to fear the, uh, the Lord and serve Him and obey His commandments. we got a mighty work to do, church. I see um, in a few other verses, and Miss Deborah, if you want to come get a song. <clears throat> Church, if you remove God and remove the things of God, things are going to spiral downhill really quickly. <clears throat> God wants us to draw close to Him. He wants us to stay humble in this thing and not let old self get in the way. Self can get in the way and um, get things going in the wrong direction, just like what happened in Saul's, in Saul's uh, when he was a king. He wasn't doing the will of God. And, as a, as a, and we need to remember that God wants us to do His will. And uh, God's got great plans for us here at Cochrane Ridge Baptist Church. Uh, he, he wants to keep the, the doors of this church open until He comes. It could be 200 years from now. Could be tomorrow. Could be tonight. <laughs> could be in a month. I don't know. But we got a lot of work to do to keep this message going out, don't we? To sp keep spreading the good old gospel news to this lost and dying world. Jesus wants to use all of us tonight. <clears throat> We're going to have global failure in this church house if we don't uh, make everything about Him. Once individuals start trying to control things and uh, take over things, that's when uh, church doors start closing. That's when preachers uh, continue to start folding up the Bible and saying, I'm done. That's the state of America today when we got, when we got men of God walking away from the pulpit because they're not supported by their churches. Uh, uh, maybe they're getting out of fellowship with God themselves. But we got a mighty work to do. God loves us. He just wants us to draw closer to Him and, and love Him, not make things about us, but make everything about Him. He just wants us to obey Him tonight. Uh, we could turn into some dry bones real easy, can't we, Brother Tommy? We don't get under the, uh, uh, the will of God and doing what God would have us to do. I love each and every one of you. He, he tells us in chapter 12. Let me find it again. <clears throat> if you will fear the Lord and serve Him and obey His voice and not rebel against the command, commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. Man. There's some good instructions right there, isn't it? If anything tonight, church, I just pray uh, 
that you realize that we need to take ourselves out of the way and just fully trust on God. We need to obey God. We need to fear God. We need to have uh, just so much respect for God and, and what God can do. And God can do a mighty work in our lives, even though you may be on the cusp of giving up on this thing, throwing in the towel. Don't give up. Trust God. Cling to Him more. Ask Him for help. He wants to help you, church. Serve Him. How can we serve Him? What can we do in this church? Uh, there's a lot of needs. Uh, uh, not only, you don't have, I mean, there's a lot more ways to serve in the church other than teaching or singing. We got uh, cleaning services here that we need to have done. Uh, we got grass cutting. Uh, we got sending out cards and uh, telling people we're thinking about them. Isn't that something? Isn't that nice when you get the card that says we missed you and we're thinking about you? <laughs> Serving the Lord in church, I, my prayer tonight is we just continue to obey the voice of the Lord. We continue to follow the, whole, the Holy Spirit of God and uh, God will he'll do some great things. We may not... Uh, uh, he may not do the things in our timing that we want because we're sort of an impatient people, aren't we? I'm not much of a patient person. But God just wants us to be patient, wants us to get humble and just love Him and draw closer to Him, obey Him, and fear the Lord. <laughs> if anybody tonight needs to come down and, and uh, ask God for uh, some help tonight, the altars are open. We uh, invite you to come down. Pray to God what He can have you to do. Uh, not only uh, just think about it each one of you have a ministry for God you don't have to uh, be uh, a great missionary and travel in the world and we're thankful for our missionaries but God has a mighty work for us right here in our local community we have a mighty great big work to do <laughs> we need to be praying for our church we need to be praying for one another we need to be praying that we serve God we need to be praying that we fear the Lord. We need to be praying that we follow His commandments because we saw the global failure of what happened in Saul's life and it can happen in our lives. And it may be it has happened in some of your lives but you've been able to overcome it with the help of God. But things can go south real quick when we take God out of it. Let's just keep God in this thing. Let's continue to invite God to our church. Let's, uh, let's come prayed up to church. Let's be an encouragement to Brother Jeff. Uh, uh, that we've been praying for him all week when he stands in this pulpit and rally behind him and give him an amen occasionally. Amen. We love Brother Jeff. Let's pray for Miss Pam. <clears throat> we got a great big work to do, church. It starts with us. If you love the Lord tonight, tell him you love him. Thank him. Thank him for salvation. When is the last time you remember just the little things that God has done for you? This has been a great week this past week to remember, to reflect about what God's done in your life. We need to thank Him and praise Him, church. <clears throat> I sure do love each and every one of you tonight. We need to pray one for another. <clears throat> All the prayer needs that have been made known to the church, let's remember each one of them. All the ones that are written down on our prayer list. Let's be praying for the uh, Florence family and pray that they get safely back to Papua New Guinea to spread the good old gospel message um, all the way around the uh, entire world. Isn't that something uh, that we have missionaries that go out and, uh, and spread the good old gospel message? People on fire for God. That's what this thing's about, just getting on fire for God and doing a mighty work. God will use you in a mighty way. He wants to use you, and he wants to use us as a church. <clears throat> let's be uh, praying one for another. Anything else to be said or done tonight before we dismiss in prayer?